Greetings from atop Old Hilltop, aka Pimlico Racecourse. Gary Quill, Nick Hahn from the Racing Biz. And we're going to give you some opinions about 149th Creek Mistakes. There's a, uh, there were supposed to be nine starters. Unfortunately, the morning line favorite, Muth, came down, spiked the fever a few days ago. So he got scratched. So we, we have a list of eight. We're going to go through each runner, give our opinions, and at the end, hopefully give you a winner or two. So I'll start it off with number one, 21 morning line, Mugatu. Mugatu, named after the B-rated comedy with the Will Ferrell uh, Zoolander. Uh, ran in the grade one bluegrass last time at 181 to one, ran a nondescript fifth. I think it would be a shock to see Mugatu anywhere close to one the pace and close to when they uh, come through the finish line for the, uh, the last time. Uh, non winners of two he's eligible for in 12 starts. Typically does his best running on synthetic or turf. I'd have to say with confidence Mugatu is a toss. What about you, Nick? Pretty much. Uh, the, one interesting thing about this horse to me is that Robbie Alvarado, who's been the exercise rider at Mystic Dan, has also been riding this horse here at Pimlico in the mornings. So uh, kind of an interesting angle here. This was the uh, horse that was left out of the derby, would have gotten into the derby uh, with just one more scratch, but I agree with you there. Number two is Uncle Heavy. Uh, this is a horse trained by Robert Reed, uh, fifth in the Wood Memorial, winner of the Withers, and in my opinion, this is a horse that could really step up, especially if the weather turns south, uh, meaning that it's coming down. Not We want all the rain to stay south, but uh, Irad Ortiz gets the mount on this, best jockey in North America, and I think this is a horse that could actually be a little bit live with that closing running style, uh, especially if, if the weather doesn't turn out. Yeah, as you pointed out, two for two on an off track. So obviously, uh, Butch Reed might be doing a rain dance back at, at the barn. Uh, great local story, uh, even though they're uh, based at parks right now, but Butch uh, cut his teeth here in Maryland, uh, working for uh, Dick Tutro years ago. So yeah, Uncle Heavy, uh, he's gonna find his way on my ticket. It's moving on to number three, Catching Freedom. Catching Freedom was my pick for the Kentucky Derby. And he ran a nondescript fourth. He kind of got lost in the excitement of the three horse photo. He kind of followed the same path that Mystic Dan did in uh, the Derby, but just got there a little bit too late. It's going to be a challenge. This might be a paceless race here, and he comes from way off the pace, but I'm not going to jump ship now with Catching Freedom. I like how he's been training. I saw him in the morning. He looks like he's still in the muscle, like he didn't run two weeks ago. So uh, I'm still in the camp of uh, Catching Freedom. I'm a little reluctant to bring this horse here, but then Brad Cox must have liked what he saw coming out of the Derby. Two weeks, of course, the separation in the time there generally that hasn't worked in current form in the Preakness. This was also my pick for the Kentucky Derby. I, I like the breeding of this horse, and the big red arrow going up on my daily racing form program tells me that this horse does not backslide. Uh, this horse just seems to get better and better, so uh, a step back in the Preakness might be a little bit of a surprise. I, I kind of like catching freedom as well. Mystic Dan is coming out of the fourth gate, the five horse with the scratch of Muth, who would have been uh, that four horse. Brian Hernandez back, great tail of the Derby, uh, great finish, Ken McPeak sweeping the uh, Oaks Derby double. Uh, horse that he was a little hesitant even to bring the Pimlico, but obviously liked what he saw. And this horse, I love the comment that McPeak gave us on our Off to the Races radio show said you could set up a bomb underneath this horse and he couldn't jump. You know, it's just nothing rattles this horse. Very kind horse, uh, named after, of all things, Mystic Tape. Dan was the uh, <laughs> the guy that invented Mystic Tape, and uh, so it, it gets the, hence the name Mystic Dan. But um, 
How do you think this horse has been performing here at Pimlico? Yeah, I mean, he, he hasn't turned a hair at Pimlico. He, you know, not knowing how the horse looks before this week, I see no super positives or, or negatives with the horse. He just kind of goes, like you said, you know, a bomb could set off and he doesn't turn a hair. I mean, he got the perfect trip in the Derby. I don't think he needs a perfect trip here to beat these horses. By default, he'll probably go off as the uh, post-time favorite with the defection of Muth. And uh, everybody up in New York is rooting for Mystic Dan to win the second jewel of the Triple Crown. Another horse, perhaps, with rain, you want to move up a little bit because this horse has shown that versatility uh, to that surface. Definitely. Now, moving on to number six, uh, the first of the two D. Wayne Lucas trainees sees the gray. There will be tens of thousands of people rooting for this horse as it's owned by my, my racehorse. Very impressive win in the grade two Pat Day mile. I was on that horse that day. I think he obviously needs to step it up a little bit. I'm not sure if he's ready for back-to-back -back efforts like that. Yeah, I don't either. I, it this is a horse I actually put a Preakness future bet on this horse uh, a couple of weeks ago before the Derby and when he ran in the uh, Pat Day Mile the odds got chopped in half with uh, I think the odds went down to like 15 like 20 to 1 he was 50 to 1 uh, before he won the Pat Day Mile this horse according to uh, Jenny Reese and D Wayne Lucas weighs 1300 pounds in a 17 hands D. Wayne Lucas has brought a tank to the Preakness, <laughs> and uh, the, the air gate breeding, I, I, I like everything except I, I just would like to see a little bit more rest with this horse, but a beautiful horse will stand out uh, in the paddock. His other horse, Just Steel, is the seven horse uh, in the Preakness. Joel Rosario gets the mount there, Justify, and uh, Justify, you remember the, the the Preakness here was just a, a dismal <laughs> day in the Preakness, <laughs> yeah. but, but love he, he performed. So you would expect both of Lucas's horses are heavily raced. It's what he does. He uses races to train his horses, uh, and, and he gets wins sometimes when he does that. Uh, but just a, 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 a nice horse here, uh, probably a pace setter. Can you know, he's going a little bit shorter? Yeah, I mean, ju just. Steel, you know, you can just throw out the 33 length defeat in, in the Derby. He got caught up in a pace that was hotter than advertised, and with no no disrespect to Keith Ashmussen, that was his first Derby. Maybe he just didn't realize he, he doesn't have the clock in his head to realize he should have backed off of that pace, and hopefully. Uh, this 33 lengths was due to him just taking care of the horse, saving him for a day like today. One thing Bob Baffert said about the Derby this morning is good horses lose by large margins in the Derby. Uh, something that he said, that might be the case with Jess Steele. They actually went down and had a uh, taster's choice moment after he said that with uh, Lucas. But, yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and, and if you remember, not uh, maybe more than a few years ago, Lucas won the Preakness with Oxbow, who ran a similar, had a similar fate in the Derby, won, won the lead and backed out. Uh, so Lightning might strike twice for the coach who's kind of long in the tooth and you know, uh, it would be nice to see him in, back in the winner's circle at Pimlico. So we'll move on to number eight, Tuscan Gold. Tuscan Gold, I think is the unofficial wise guy horse of this uh, uh, Preakness, Tra trained by Chad Brown, who has been known recently of bringing horses that have not been in the Derby picture and just bringing them down to Baltimore and they run big races. Uh, cloud computing, early, early voting are the two that come to mind in, in recent years. So a lot of people are high on Tus Tuscan Gold. Nick, what's your opinion? This 
horse was a value horse, one to really look at when he was eight to one before the scratch of youth, but actually at nine to two in the morning line is is one that's sort of lightly raced. Also has that curling bloodline on the on the female side that I like. So I like just lightly raced uh, Tyler Gaffleyone's mount here. Young horse just may not be seasoned enough for the Preakness. Which leads us to the far outside, the number nine, our last horse who will be in the gate. Imagination, trained by the aforementioned Bob Baffert. Bob was going to have the favorite again, Muth. He's left with imagination. I think this horse is going to take more money than he deserves. And the reason why I say that, you look at his PPs, he's first and second in six tries. How can I not be high on this horse? I go back to Southern California. How good was the three-year-old crop in Southern California? Stronghold didn't run a bad derby, but I still think Imagination has some growing to do. Today, uh, when Bob was holding court with all the media types, he kind of led believe that this horse needs some encouragement to pass horses. It's sort of like a hanger, and uh, I, that's a term that I shudder to hear when, when I hear a horse is a hanger. He'll probably be the early speed, Frankie Dottori from the outside will probably gun with him and see how far he can go. What's your opinion? Has never really run in big fields, four horse fields, five horse fields. That's what they had in California this past spring. Uh, but I, I like this horse. I like the rest. I like the fact that uh, he sort of fits that recent trend. I think he sort of uh, is the best horse to, to, to fit that trend. If it's dry, especially if somehow this track, and it, and it very well could, we may not get much rain at all. We might get a tenth of an inch, we might get an inch. But I think this is a horse that uh, is, is one to look to Tory, uh, brings another element to this horse. I like him. All right, so we've run through each horse. I'll start off giving my pick. As I mentioned earlier in Catching Freedom, I'm not going to jump off the bandwagon now. I'm sticking with Catching Freedom to win the 149th Preakness Stakes. Unfortunately, Mystic Dan will come up a bit short. I like him underneath, along with the somewhat local horse, Uncle Heavy, to round out the trifecta. I'm gonna go with imagination. I'm gonna buck the. I'm gonna go with the recent trend. Uh, I like Catching Freedom. I was between those two horses, but I'm gonna go with imagination. Catching Freedom, Mystic Dan third. Uh, that's something that you have seen in the Preakness. Is while they haven't won the Preakness, they have all run well. Those Derby starters in the Preakness. So uh, nothing else changes. I'm going with imagination. Um, Catching Freedom, Mystic Dan. Okay, so there you have it, the 149th Preakness Stakes. Have fun watching the race, or if you're not out here with a party, and catch all of the Mid-Atlantic action on the racing biz. We cover Maryland, West Virginia, PA, Delaware, all around the Mid-Atlantic. That's your source for racing in the Mid-Atlantic. So have a great Preakness Day, everyone.